connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on the Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is fear, trust, and the unknown. And uh, so many of us think about the unknown and change, and it conjures all kinds of fear and sometimes terror. And um, I, we're going to talk about how we can embrace the unknown with excited and Participation and joy, and and how much more that makes available for us in our lives. But before we get started, let's just take a couple minutes to settle in. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it, and imagine clean, crisp oxygen just flowing into your lungs and flooding your bloodstream and nourishing all your cells and all your organs. And as you exhale, exhale any tension or stress, relax your shoulders and your neck. And let's take another deep breath in through your nose. This time, imagine clean, crisp oxygen, um, light. We just did that. <laughs> so imagine brilliant, bright light flooding you and and enlivening and electrifying and energizing you and all your cells and all your organs and the molecules and electrons and exhale any toxins and any tension i love that somebody is is sharing inhale clarity beautiful i love it um, and now let's just gently press our palms together and softly rub your fingers against your palms and feel how delicious that sensation is, that soft tickling and tingling and bring yourselves present right here, right now. Welcome, welcome. So conscious question, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And good morning, Rosalyn. It's great to have you guys here. And uh, welcome to everybody who's joining us this morning. We're talking about fear of change and the unknown and cultivating trust. And that trust is sort of the antidote to fear and love, of course. Um, I, I believe it's the uh, Course in Miracles that says if, if it's... Uh, not love its fear is that is that how it goes in any case when we when we allow ourselves to operate in the world from a place of um, uh, allowing ourselves to believe that life is happening for us and through us rather than to us uh, when we allow ourselves to know or operate in in the belief that our life is unfolding perfectly for us um, then it shifts our experience of fear and so the question is how do we cultivate that trust how do we get ourselves present to knowing or allowing ourselves to be in the space of the perfection of our lives. And I talk about all the time how connecting with that inner core, that place of presence within us allows us to, to really come into connection and alignment with ourselves and and with life even in the most difficult moments and i know what it's like to have your mind running in sort of a panic mode and it's interesting to notice how our future is unknown. There's no way that we know what our future is with certainty. We can predict certain, certain aspects of our lives with some reliability, perhaps, but we don't have, we don't know how life is going to unfold. And we act as though we do because it gives us a greater sense of 
security. And when we don't know, what we tend to do is run this routine in our heads that is projecting typically a negative future. So that's what worry is. Worry is uh, running this endless loop kind of tape in our brains that, um, that is predicting a negative outcome or an undesired outcome in our lives. And I, I have studied NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, and had occasion yesterday to work with one of my clients uh, using using a, such a simple, amazingly simple NLP technique that was really profoundly effective like that for her. And so I'm going to share that with you because this is a way that we can uh, minimize the negative voice impact in our heads and perhaps we can also amplify the positive. So this is this is a really simple thing what we get to do is to touch into one of those voices that is uh, telling us all kinds of things that are not really supportive, like we're unworthy or we're not good enough or we're never gonna be able to do this or you know any of these negative messages. And if you can tune into the negative message, listen to that voice and notice what is the tone of that voice. Is it low pitched? Is it high pitched? Is it talking slow? Is it talking fast? In the case of this person, what their experience was, was that the voice that was telling them that they weren't good enough in their mind was a, um, a, male, a male voice that was low pitched and um, speaking kind of slowly. And uh, so I said, well, what happens if you, instead of hearing that voice as a low pitched male voice, if you make it a cartoon mouse voice and it goes really high and it talks really fast and, and it was really interesting because here was this thing that was so torturous to her to hear. And, and when she changed the voice, then it became, she, I saw her smile. She actually smiled, the same message, but it made her smile. And so uh, Rosalind says, the voice sounded like mumbling. And um, so it, what we get to do is to change the voice and see the impact of changing the voice because here she had created this, sort of mouse cartoon voice in her head and she couldn't even get out all the words because it, it, the, the voice just, it was ridiculous. And, and she couldn't get back to that low voice after practicing that several times. And so the impact of that just went, disappeared and she lightened up. It's amazing that we can do something so simple and have such a profound impact, right? So try that for yourselves and see what a difference that can make. Now on the other side, the other side is um, the fear of the unknown. Uh, and we're, we're modifying the voice that's, that's chattering about the unknown by making it a funny voice or a silly voice or speeding it up and making it um, stumble or stutter, or you could make it do any number of things that would, would shift your experience of it. Now, recognizing that we want to be able to embed the, the trust in life and, and knowing that life is unfolding in its perfection for us, even when it's difficult. Good morning, Gina. So welcome. It's so glad to have you here. And thank you. I'm, I'm so glad you enjoyed the show. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. So um, let's, let's think about that voice of authority that's in your head or the voice that carries weight for you. 
how about if we take some of the messages we want to really believe and and use that voice to input those messages so maybe maybe there is a voice that would be um, really melodic or maybe it's it's a voice of authority whatever that voice is what happens if we use that voice to to convey a message to ourselves that our lives are unfolding in service to our intention and that um, that it's perfect and and life is happening for us and through us rather than to us and what happens if we use that voice of authority to give us those kinds of positive messages and messages that we're really doing well and we're we're growing and evolving and um we're loved and we're supported and it's safe to trust that our life is unfolding perfectly it's safe to trust that we can that things are going to work out um, so that's one way that we can uh, install trust for ourselves and um, and when it's interesting because when we distrust ourselves, we often act in ways that are worthy of our distrust. When we trust ourselves, we often act in ways that are worthy of our trust. Good morning, Dido, welcome. Great to have you here. And welcome again to everybody who's joining us. So I think it's, I think, we we get to look at this whole idea of change and um the unknown in a way that we can be anticipating wonderful things instead of anticipating terrible things and uh when we can presence ourselves to the fact that we really don't know and since we really don't know we can be imagining all the wonderful things that that could be in store for us and by imagining and putting our energy toward uh creating scenarios that are positive then we've shifted our whole energy we've shifted our frequency and we've sh shifted our capacity to be able to receive those wonderful things when we have when we have a joyful anticipation uh, we don't we create that we create the joyful anticipation in the same way that we create the fear and it's by projecting forward into an unknown our ideas or expectations or our um our imaginings and um these imaginings when they're vivid can very often be sort of self-fulfilling you know they can happen and um whether they're good or bad you know because we can we when we project fear forward we often encounter things that are worthy of that fear and when we project when we go into something with a positive anticipation and i'm and i'm saying anticipation rather than expectation um but an a, a a positive feeling then um we look for the things that are going to fulfill that anticipation so if we uh go to the store for instance although you know it's a very different experience these days um but let's say we're just in our regular day if we're expecting or anticipating magic something magical and then we notice the magical things that happen and uh it might be it might be just the sparkle of the sunlight that touches your heart in a new way for a moment but that's pretty magical 
you know, it was really interesting for me this morning. Um, I, I was uh, doing my morning routine and I, I got sparkled in the eye by the sun and it was such a gift. You know, it was like, oh, hello, old friend, you know, so glad to see you. It was, it just lit up my morning in a literal and, and a uh, figurative way. Emotionally, it just lit me up. And so when we expect magic, that's what we find, I think. And certainly we find more of it. And um, let's see we're talking more this this trust and fear kind of thing so um fear fear is a function of feeling a threat and we often manufacture those those imagined threats um for ourselves but what what counteracts a threat is a feeling of safety. And what is underlying a feeling of safety is a feeling of trust, I, I think. And, um, you know, somebody's got your back or the universe has your back or you have your back. Um, and so cultivating this sense of safety is what safety and trust is what we're up to. And um, let's see. So presencing yourself to your breath is a really powerful way to sort of slow down and experience. And um, presencing ourselves to beauty is another way to become aware of of the the um the wonder and that sense of wonder yeah i i i've spoken this before and i probably i misquoted it before but um i've i've i read this and it really really resonated with me and it was it's not that love is not the first path to god beauty is and um, that presence of uh, to beauty and experiencing the awe of it is something that moves me anyway into another dimension of experience that that connects me to the grander workings of the universe somehow and helps to stimulate trust for that for me. Now, getting back to our imaginings of the future and uh, being able to anticipate the future in, in a uh, happy way, uh, we're going to look at another NLP technique for a minute. So we also envision things like we might imagine ourselves as a bag lady going forward in the future because I'm not going to make enough money and, uh, and I'm going to, you know, lose my house and I'm going to lose my, you know, all, all my security and I'm going to end up being a bag lady. And we might have this vision of being a bag lady and it's in brilliant color and it's very vivid and it's, it's just this really powerful, frightening image, perhaps, okay? So what do we do? Well, we get to experiment with the same, the same uh, submodalities kind of with with this, with this image. So what happens? In this vivid, very crisp, brilliant image that might be really close in your face. What happens if you move it away from yourself? What happens if you give yourself a little bit of distance from it? What happens if you fade out the colors? make it black and white, for example, or just put a, a filter color over it so that all the colors are muted and have a particular tone instead. What happens if you fuzz out the edges? Uh, 
and and how does that change your experience of this image because what's likely is that when you, when you do any one or a number of these different mo modality shifts um then it changes your experience of that image if if it's still what happens if you spin it around if it's moving what happens if you make it still you know maybe you can make it still and push it away from you maybe you could put a picture frame around it and make it black and white you know whatever whatever you get to experiment with what changes your experience of this thing but it's really really powerful just like changing the tonality of the voice that that you have going on in your head and um I'm just trying to think of some some other things you can change is um, when there's if you're thinking of an event and you keep playing it over and over and over in your head. Some of us do that. It's like a movie on on a permanent loop. And when what you can do is if this is a traumatic movie, one of the things that you can do is imagine yourself like in a movie theater seeing that movie on a screen instead of in your head seeing that movie on the screen then see yourself in the movie theater so you step back from seeing the movie step out of yourself and see yourself seeing the movie and you can watch yourself seeing the movie and watch the re reaction of yourself seeing the movie and that gives you some distance to allow space and breathing possibly another thing that you could do is you could make that movie black and white or you could speed it up and you could put a um like the looney tunes uh soundtrack to it and you could play it backwards and you could bounce back and forth between playing it backwards and playing it forwards and speeding it up and and making it black and white or if it's already black and white making it color or any number of different things by changing change the soundtrack you know change the focus change the proximity all of these different and uh, change the color uh all of these things are really really powerful in create modifying the impact of the things that we use to influence ourselves so let's say there's a movie that you really want or there's something that you do desire and you know that when things are really bright and colorful and crisply edged and um, close up that that has a huge impact well use those use those variations to make more of an impact with the things that you're you're wanting to manifest you're desiring to manifest so that's making them more real to you make the things that are negative less real make the things that are that you that are positive or that you desire more real and so the thing that underlies this whole conversation really is that what we think is real is actually a perception and how we react to the things that we think is re are real is actually a perception so we can we can manipulate our experience of things and uh very simply in many many cases and you might want to just have some fun playing with that so i i want to mention to you guys I know I've mentioned a bunch of times that I have a coaching practice 
And I am now, uh, I have some spots open. I'm open and opening enrollment for our next cohort, which is going to begin on February 1st. And so if you're at all interested, if you're interested in finding out about the coaching program, uh, you can go to my website, which is yourcoreconnection.com and uh, go to the page that, well, check it out to get familiar with what it's about on the home page. And then you can go to a page that's called The Work. And it tells you about the program and how it works. And if you're at all interested in checking out this challenge to uh, really go deep and, and um, explore your deep transformation, then please be in touch with me over Messenger. And what we'll do is we will set up an appointment for you to experience the core connection work so that you can evaluate for yourself if this is something that resonates for you. I have seen miracle after miracle happen for people. And I just want to offer you the opportunity. It's one-on-one. -on -one with also group sessions through through the uh, three months. It's a three month segment. And the thing is that this, this next segment that's starting in February is going to be the last segment that would make you eligible to join the program that I'm going to create to actually teach how to do the core connection work. And so uh, it's a requirement for that, um, that training that you participate in at least one of these, one of these coaching segments with me. So that it's a three month commitment and um, I invite you to check it out and see if it's of interest. And if it is, let's, let's, Let's have a session and talk and see if it would be a good fit for you. So um, I think that's it for today. I want to say thank you again. So much love to you and such appreciation for being able to engage with you uh, every weekday morning here on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page at 9 a.m. Eastern. And Dido, thank you. Um, so Dido says, I can attest to how wonderful Mira's coaching is. I want you to understand it's not like any coaching program you've ever encountered. It's really transformational, deeply, profoundly. And, and I can say that I've never seen work that is as profoundly impactful, reliably so, as the core connection work, because it stems from con connecting with your inner knowing. And um, Dido, I so appreciate your endorsement. I, I, it, it's miraculous work, again, because it's guided by your other than conscious awareness. So please, um, if, if I've, if I've uh, tickled your interest, please check it out. And uh, again, that's yourcoreconnection.com and the page to check out is the work. And I invite you to check out all the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network. And I thank you again for being here with me. And I look forward to the next time we get together. Much love.